All right. Welcome. This is a school district of Prescott Board of Education regular meeting. I'll call this meeting to order subject section 1983 Wisconsin statutes. First item is to adopt the agenda. Dr. Spicuza, are there any changes or modifications here? There are no changes. All right. We'll need a motion. I'll move to adopt the agenda. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Tanya, would you care to lead us? Sure. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four, recognition of visitors. Anybody in the audience that would care to be recognized? All right, we'll move on to item five, good news. Rick? Yeah, and I'm not just because uh, Mike Koika is in the audience tonight, but um, <laughs> this summer, as you can imagine, we do, our custodians do an impeccable job with the deep clean, setting up everything with regards to getting ready for the next fall. But then we complicated it with flip-flopping two schools and also having construction in three sites and turning off water in two of them. Um, obviously, it's very hard to clean our sites when the custodians can't have access to water. Um, yet, the good news is, is that we are on target with uh, the um, getting the schools ready to receive our students in their new configurations. Um, we also wrapped up summer school, and so there's some slides coming through. Um, I was treated, one of the nice things about um, summer school is students get to do many different things and treats, and I was treated to a pancake breakfast um, by some of my two favorite students, so I appreciated that. Um, also, I wanted to share that we um, had a meeting today with the city uh, talking about the TIF districts four and five and how that's going for the city um, and some of the improvements that you, the community sees around town. And then um, just wanted to uh, point out that the administrative team received a night off. And so they are very, um, they are uh, out among the citizens uh, enjoying a summer evening. <coughs> All right. All right, thanks, Rick. Uh, I'll start school business. First item is consent. We have the June 21st, 2023 regular board minutes, board checks and finance, non-licensed personnel retirement resignation, employment, change of non-licensed staff, the OSHA guidelines, yearly approval, and the spring coaches rehires. Is there anything that the board would like to pull out of the consent agenda? Not me. All right, I'll adopt the consent agenda. Are there any objections? All right, we'll move on. We'll call that the consent is adopted. Item B, consider retirement, resignation, new hires. We have no retirements, a couple of resignations. <coughs> Correct. Um, at this time, we have two resignations, a fourth grade teacher, um, Dana Wells, and Stacy Sepikanis is taking a year um, of absence. Board, any comments or questions? No. Can we can entertain a motion here. I move to approve all resignations. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. New hires? We have three. want to thank again Chantel Byram, our HR director, our principals, um, and special ed director, um, being able to fill slots as quickly as we can. We have two special education positions, cross-categorical at the high school, Zach Bison, and then Anastasia uh, Bundy for the intermediate sped teacher. And just recently, yesterday, closed a deal for the fourth grade teacher, Emily Hoven. Great. Any comments? Okay, we can take a motion. I move to approve all new hires. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Item C, consider the district's 2023-24 academic standards. So typically, um, well, typically our teaching and learning director would walk you through this. This is an annual requirement by all school boards is to communicate to its community uh, the different curriculum standards that are in place. There are no changes for the upcoming 23-24 school year. 
the core areas of reading, math, science, history, um, are all following the Wisconsin state standards um, as specified. We also have a personal finance literacy that follows the Wisconsin model of academic standards for personal finance, financial literacy. Also, you all are aware that that is a new requirement for future graduates to take a class in financial literacy. I did want to just uh, point out that this is, and this information has to be approved by the board on an annual basis but also our community on our website, Michael Kosmowski, Teaching and Learning does an outstanding job of keeping information up to date about all of our curriculum and programs that are within the district. And so just directing people to our website if they have any questions. These standards are put on the annual notice, but then also the information by content area is also on our website. Tanya, any comments or questions on this? No, I see that, I mean, for years we've had similar standards, so, yep, we're good. Pat? Yeah, no, uh, Rick, maybe if you would. These are not changing from last year, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. Question, and I know it's unfair because the admin team isn't here. Um, I'd be curious to see how year one of the personal finance and literacy program went. So maybe in a future board meeting, it'd be awesome to see how that one went. Sure. Now that it is a graduation requirement. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, I wonder. I'm taking it personal to my own kids. Can use it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Vicki? Uh, nope. I don't have anything. Oh. No. All right. We'll take a motion here. I move to approve the district's 2023 20, 24 academic standards. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That one carries. Item D, consider the food service proposal for breakfast and lunch prices for the 23-24 school year. Yes, and I'm going to have Nicole Lenzner uh, come forward. She is our director of nutritional services and food service. On an annual basis, this is the time where we have to kind of set our prices for uh, families with regards to breakfast and lunch, as well as our partnership with St. Joe's, because we now oversee that program. She has a series of slides, and I'll pull those up for you, Nicole, and I'll have you uh, run through your presentation. Thank you. So the first one is just a comparison of what we ran last year, what we're proposing this year, and then the locations it affects, and the change as well. As you notice, it's, it's small. It's kind of like a rock and a hard place. We need to do this financially, but we also didn't want to impact a lot. <laughs> we want to make sure that we take, can take care of our families. And um, do you want to just share a little bit of some of the challenges that we've faced this year, or do you want to address it as action yep, steps? Yep, I actually have them in the next couple of slides. Right. Yep, yep. So, impactful factors, and this is future, but as Rick said in the past, we've, we've had the inflation. It's not just when you go to the grocery store, it's also when we shop for us to, um, and cost of goods and services across the board. So, you know, calling people in to fix our ovens costs more as well. Um, but the USDA just passed their, their reimbursement rates and they're actually going down because one of the um, aids is ending. So that's where we're trying to kind of be ahead of that curve so that way we aren't affected next year when this time runs around and it'll be about $43,000 if the numbers are the same. But then the next slide I'll show you how we're gonna make the numbers not the same. So just some important factors kind of gearing up to that. Question, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, Last slide, number one. So federal lunch reimbursements have been cut. So it's cut because the extra reimbursement from COVID is ending. Got it. So it's not what it used to be. Got it. So I just wanted you guys to kind yep. of be aware of like, I'm not trying to gouge anybody. <laughs> no, there's, there's no, no, I understand. Reason. I just wanted to know what the cut was. So. Yep. Yeah, okay. but it comes so at a bit. It's, it's COVID funding coming to an end. Yeah, okay. so unless they extend it, which we didn't do the universal green yeah. in Wisconsin yeah. yet. Okay. I just wanted you guys to kind of have a bigger picture. Was that for a couple of years, mm -hmm. that it increase? Was, oh, I can't remember the name, but it was um, something along the lines of Feed Every Kid Act, but it was different acronyms. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. know that one down. But yeah, that one is just coming to an end, and they're okay. trying to extend it, but 
Yeah. Like okay. Universal, I'm not keeping my hopes up. I'm planning for the future. <laughs> there we go. So right. basically, it's going to be a 37 cent increase for, on us, like less reimbursement. No. Per, okay. So your price will be the same. It'll be less on my end. So um, that's what I mean on yep. the school district Sorry. again is a yes. 37 cents yep. less. So we're yep. going to okay. try to do our best to combat mm -hmm. that with the next slide. Like, yep. It's really exciting. But <laughs> all right. I read it. Cool. It looks exciting. <laughs> Yep, yep. So to kind of be ahead of that, we have a goal of increasing breakfast by 10% and lunch by 5%. Um, we created social media, and the next page will show you how to get there. And we're going to push that at the, um, the welcome back meetings. So I'll be there, and then they're at the same time, which is fun. So I'll have somebody else at the other school, too. But we're going to hand it out to everybody who will take one and get everybody to join and get the kids engaged. We need our community to know who we are. We need everybody to know that when we give the kids Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it's not the same <laughs> that you can get at the store. Mm -hmm. It's the healthy version. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of want to make sure everybody knows what our program's really about, and that at the end of the day, we just want to make sure feeds are, kids are fed and that they're getting the nutrition from us. And then some of our um, restructuring so that we, we can run more cost effective. We're trying to do the best we can. And we get um, commodities as well so we focus them more in the center of the plate instead of the sides so in previous years directors focused on vegetables whereas i focus more on protein mm -hmm. and i'm like oh we'll make the vegetables work so fingers crossed <laughs> we're <laughs> gonna make that extend as far as we can and there's the social media so nice. super fun there's not too much <clears throat> on it yet because we just started it but feel free to check it out share it Follow for fun stuff. Nice. Cool. Yes. What kind of what kind of things are you planning on having on the social media? So we're gonna do try it Fridays, which is pretty exciting. So once a month, every Friday, we're gonna try things and give kids a say. So I'm gonna kind of leak what they are so that the kids know about it beforehand. So and it's gonna be fun stuff and healthy stuff too. So I got chili on there. So if they like it, it'll be on the menu next year. Okay. If they absolutely hate it, they won't see it again. I okay. <laughs> but that's like cool. Barley and stuff like that. It's it's fun things to kind of get them to at least try. It. Even okay. if they don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So fun stuff. Cool. I don't know what seventy. Um. Any other questions, Helen or Vicki? Tiny, any other questions? No, overall it looks like between 10 to 20 cents increase, which means we're like taking <coughs> half on our end and trying to do our, our yep. best to get more um, efficiencies out of our program as well as engage kids, which is mm -hmm. great. I like the idea of social media with kids. I mean, who would have thought? So um, that's awesome. And you answered my question with how would we get like student feedback and engagement? It sounds yep. like kind of through some of these kind of campaigns and, and getting their input. So great. And my staff does their best, and even before I got here, they do their best at talking with the kids. Okay. So if anybody gives any feedback, they are told, okay, fix it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then tell me about it so we can fix it moving forward, too. Okay. So we treat them kind of like a restaurant would. If you have a complaint, we want to know. We want to yeah. fix it right now. Okay. Okay. Pat, anything? My only comment would be I really appreciate the fact that you're trying not to raise this on families, right? And, and you're trying to, by increasing participation, cover... Mm -hmm. your our portion yep. um, I just want to make sure that so my cowboy math here it's about four so if you take a 20 cent increase average right per day mm -hmm. over what 200 days of school something like that okay so probably 35 bucks a year is what this would increase and I mean that doesn't 35 bucks is 35 bucks but it, I guess I want to make sure that we're setting you up to succeed and, and we're not being too, um, I don't know, conservative is probably not the right word. But you feel good about this? I mean... I do. I have lingering hopes that we're not the only ones who are going to see this and that we'll get more help down the line. And we do plan on running for more grants too this year now that okay. I kind of feel more comfortable about it. Okay. <laughs> so that'll help too. And that's kind of my, my back pocket. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. So. And, and just out of curiosity, I know that we have to set these prices ahead of the school year. Is there, 
any statute or anything that prohibits mid-course corrections if necessary? No, and if we get to that mm -hmm. point where it's, oh shoot, yeah. <laughs> then I would definitely come back and ask that we adjust. But okay. I'd really like to try to not push it back on the families because we do see quite a few families struggle. Yeah. So I think oh. sharing the burden would be better. And I know that we had some major equipment that went out this year as well as yep. added personnel as we were transitioning and bringing you in so um, hopefully knock on wood right that we don't have more equipment but yep. for the most part we think we're pretty in good status right now you've upgraded that and you are making some changes with regards to personnel Correct. so that accounted for a lot of the deficit this year yeah. um, and so it's kind of kind of a hybrid if you will we're trying to split the difference Increased participation, and we will be monitoring it uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, pretty heavy in the first few months. I guess I should know this. We're, are we preparing anything at St. Joe's? Yep. So or is we it getting... actually prepare ninety okay. percent. There's Wednesdays is our pot day, so Wednesdays is our kind of make completely from scratch day, oh. and we do transport that there. But okay. at St. Joe's, yep. It's, and if anybody calls okay. out, it's me. So if you have kids there, they'll see me yeah. making it. And there are they are they cut so equipment issues how are we handling so, so our agreement with them is that they make sure that all the equipment they provide for us oh, yeah. and in good repair as well as even I think the state um, inspection they yep. cover that and they're working on getting a steamer to upgrade their stuff oh, as well awesome. because I okay. sold them on a steamer all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you yep all right thank you thank you uh, we can take a motion here uh, I moved to approve the food service proposal for breakfast and lunch prices for the 2023-24 school year. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That one carries. Move on to item E. Consider a revised and updated bid to pave the bus garage parking lot. All right. And I'm going to have uh, Mike Hoyk uh, <coughs> join us. Um, last month, you know that we went pretty extensive into this discussion and you directed us to gather a lot more information. And so a few things that I just wanted to point out is that Michael walk you through that we have a, what you would call in the trades a value engineered option. Um, we had proposed doing the full uh, bus garage and then um, kind of with the state of the art and at the high end for the work. There's a value engineered option one, and then just to confuse you, we have a plan A and a plan B. Plan A is to do the front of the garage, and plan B was to do the front where the people, uh, the workers are in the two bays and then come over a little bit. And I'll have Mike talk a little bit about the prices and the differences that are up on the board. And the bottom line going from left to right is the original price was 314000 and then the three other columns display the total price based on these options that Michael explained. Yep. So just so you also know, we, we did a tropical graph map of the whole site back in February, that whole intermediate school site. So we don't have to pay for that again. We already did boring samples, so we have a pretty good um, handle on what, what the substrate base is at. So, um, you know, when we first talked about the original base, that's four inches of asphalt. That is also uh, 10 inches of gravel base and 12 inches of breaker with the, with the fabric. So that's, that's, you know, if, if you will, if you got good, better, and best, that's like the best. So with the fabric and stuff. Um, so option one, that's still an entire parking lot. But what we, what we did is uh, you got rid of the fabric, so that lowered some of the excavating cost. And instead of doing um, the 12 inches of uh, gravel base, they're gonna use a, kind of a crushed limestone, a little finer. They're gonna use a granule fill versus the breaker rock, it's the sand. So that's, that's where that, that lowered that excavating cost down. As you can see, the designs and the seating and all that, that's the, the engineers, architect, whatever choice you make, it's the same. It's just they're using different material. So that, that's where your savings are there. So 
and, and to kind of get into, you know, I know somebody had a question like which one holds up the best and whatever. These are both really good systems, but if you will, the best is the breaker rock system and stuff. That will give you longevity. So, you know, if you want to get into the, the maintenance part of a, a parking lot, you know, and you basically break it apart in five phases, you know, taking a parking lot that will go from 15 to 25 years, you know, first, first phase, zero to five years. Very little maintenance, just a little bit of crack filling, something like that. Five to seven, you're gonna have crack filling, seal coating. Um, years 15 to 20, phase uh, four, um, you're probably gonna get into the same thing, crack filling, seal, it's about every five years you gotta do something. And then you're starting in the repairs and maintenance. So, one of the questions we have, you know, so the maintenance is about the same, no matter what your base is and stuff like that, because you still have your surface. The question come is that are we better off doing the 314 or doing option one? It's it's really hard to say, okay, we're gonna get five more years going one way or the other. Because part of it is, you know, when if we get underneath there and there's there's less clay than we thought and there's more rock, we're good. So that's kind of the what ifs. It, it's a good system. Um, the other system, yes, will last longer. Um, typically, a lot of our parking lots in our district, we've we've been going over the 25 and 30 year with with a good maintenance program. So, mm -hmm. so um, I guess either one kind of gets to be. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. I'll try and answer on that. But. Um, <coughs> So uh, I know another question is, or um, it's probably been waiting, how, how do we know it's gonna drain properly? That's in the design fee, that's with that tropical map. So when they get on site, they know which way they gotta take the material out, get the water to run as much on our property as we can. You know, there's always gonna be some going down the street, but that's part of the goal is to get most of the water to run back on, onto our property, so. Can I just stop you right there? Yep. Just to, so the longevity question, I don't know, Helen, did you want to ask, did that answer any your questions from last month? Yeah, I think, and I did send a, a question in. I just wanted to know, and I think you answered it very well. There's a lot of unknowns until you actually dig in the ground. Obviously, we know yep. that. And then mm -hmm. um, it's hard to put a specific, like, yep, yep. it's going to last 10 more years. We know <clears> that. But I, I look at the two numbers, and yes, they're, you know, obviously we're saving money, but if we're saving money and it's going to break down quicker, then in my mind that doesn't make much sense. So I just wanted to make yep. sure that yep. we had that it's, it's, it's a good discussion. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're both good systems. And that's why you have to kind of scale it as good, better, and best. I mean, sure. type, type situation. The, the site is a higher elevation, so runoff will be good. Um, should, you know, like some places, if you got a parking lot that's kind of been a dip or something, you can get pooling and stuff, and it starts working on their asphalt, and that can uh, shorten the longevity of it. But up here, it's a pretty high elevation. The water should uh, run off very well. Okay. And then the other one was for the runoff pad. I know we talked a little bit. Did you have any follow-up questions for Mike on that? No, I, I mean, I had some offline discussions with with Rick and Mike, I mean, I'm comfortable. I wanted to, I, I just wanted to make sure, um, for whatever it's worth, that I knew, I knew that I knew we were trying to rush and get this. I don't want to say rush, but we're trying to move quickly here, yep. right? And I just wanted to make sure that that um, the price was inclusive of, of, of appropriate grading and drainage and all that yes. good stuff. I mean, yep. Mike, you've already alluded to it. The number one problem you, is if you don't get water off, right? That's going to be the biggest problem. Correct. So, yeah. yeah. You, you want to get the water yeah. off, especially in this, especially when you get to the shoulder months, you know, you're April, right. May, and you get that free, thaw, stuff. free cycle. Mm -hmm. So you want to get that moisture out of, off there. So. Yeah. And, and I appreciate the work you guys have done. I, th I think you guys have answered my questions on that. So. All right. Do you have anything else, Mike, that you're um, planning on? No, I think, I think we kind of covered all the different types. I don't know if you want any more inf information on plan one and two it's just doing a smaller square footprint of it you know um, and mike do you mind and i'll probably put you on the spot what are the trade-offs though of doing instead of doing the original or option one when you go to a whole parking lot 
Yeah, yeah. doing the whole thing versus uh, piecemealing. Yep. Um, when you do a whole, when you do the whole parking lot, you know, if, if you see where the the orange kind of hash marks are there, okay, so the water is going to run off of that and then sit on the gravel. So you, you know, you do have to try and excavate some of that off. That's why you don't see a lot of savings in the excavation. Because you still have to excavate that other existing gravel part to get the water out of there. Um, and you do have to carry your sub base over far enough so that asphalt doesn't break apart on the edge. So if you just say, well, okay, we're, we're just going to get asphalt for here, and we don't carry that substrate over further, that's just going to break apart. Um, obviously, if you do the whole surface, you can really get a better job of. Um, getting the water, controlling the water where you want it to go. Um, and of course, longevity as far as plowing, it's easier to plow. Um, you can get um, just a safer bus platform for workers, drivers, the whole thing. So, yeah. And, and I just wanted to point out one part of the detail that's not really part of this discussion, but just to make sure that people were aware is that it is tied into the master plan with the referendum. This is a non-referendum choice that you're making, mm -hmm. but when you talk about ponding pools uh, or stormwater ponds retention and things ponds. like that, retention ponds, that's at the top of plan two. All of that has been engineered and designed to do two things, protect the facility, because we've had a lot of water infiltration, and also to protect the new parking lot that's on the side of the building and so that's already been incorporated, and that is part of the referendum work. It's part of the referendum, which but, um, will, will incorporate water runoff from this space into those existing retention ponds that we're sorry. going to be putting in next year. So I'll go back to price. Just one more. Oh, go ahead. I just had one more follow-up question. You and he spoke. Um, Runquist spoke last time about how the gravel affected, like coming in when they're uh, um, like working on the trucks and or working on the well, I mean especially in the, the buses in the, so that's especially side. in the summer um, yeah if you get up there and especially with a dry year like that yeah. we had you, you get high winds and stuff that when the 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 lime dust defines the they circle <clears throat> they blow on the bus they blow in the buses they blow into the work area where they have to work so it's it's, it's, it's a dirty work environment. It's, and and you know, that plan one and two would not, that wouldn't help that because that, that would leave that, that unpaid, That right? would help it, but would not eliminate. Okay. It, yeah. would, it would help a lot, but not eliminate okay. it. Whereas okay. The, whereas the original plan and option one would be the would full, full area. Okay. So. And just so I'm looking at the columns the right way, option one is the entire parking lot still. This is the number one we asked to come back. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at as one option. And then plan one is that, like the picture you showed that's where it was front. last of the parking yep. lot. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I'm looking at the right columns. And then, Mike, I was looking back to see how long have we been talking about this stuff. And tell me if I'm wrong here, but I see a reference back in all of our stuff to like 2010 where we got a bid. It, that's probably was the second okay. time we've, yeah. um, we've probably been talking parking lots off and on over 15 years okay so. yeah it seems like I mean it feels like it's kind of sudden and and I think it was like oh wait this is good timing was like the suddenness but really we've been talking about this like I can see in 2010 and I don't know if you remember our bid price back in 2010 but it was it, about sixty-five thousand dollars. It's more than that, Tanya. Yeah, okay. It was more like a hundred thousand. Okay. But so it's sixty-five for the asphalt material, and stuff designs, and yeah. asphalt, um, and that price was extremely low. We had a contractor at that time because it was right after the housing market, mm -hmm. and he wanted to, and also Monarch wanted to keep their employees going. Yeah. So we were basically getting that for cost. We were getting lucky. And yeah. I think back to like, wow, if we would have done this 10 yeah. years ago. Like, and that's just one of my worries down the road is, yeah. is like this is something that eventually yeah. seems like needs to get done. And mm -hmm. if we wait another 10, and we <coughs> almost tripled the quote. I mean, I know it was 100,000, right? But it was yep. over twice yep. Um, yep. the cost. So yeah. anyways. Yeah, yeah. There, there's the savings tying it in with yeah this project we talked about that last yeah. time so yeah. yeah so it would be probably tripled if we weren't tying it in with a project yeah. compared yeah. yeah vicky do you have any questions for mike so yeah the 
<clears throat> the difference between the first numbers you brought to us last month of 314, we'll just round it up to 315, versus the 263 now for the entire lot. Yep. This 263 is with We're a smaller, uh, like half inch less of asphalt, possibly a different It's base. half inch less of the asphalt. Yep. We're, um, we're using a different substrate yep. versus the breaker rock. We're using more sand and gravel. It's it's a proven it's a proven system. It's 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 nothing new. So that's yep. you know, so it's, it's going to be a good system. Well, and and that I mean, mostly that stuff has been used and like you said, maintenance wise. I mean, even putting it in, as long as it's stamped down enough and compacted enough, we should be fine. And then we keep up on the maintenance, which is seal coating. That's filling cracks, yep. that sort of stuff. Yep. I know we can get we can get along. In, maintenance is in the, the, the key. To, yeah, I've that, that you know it's an investment, so you have to yeah. maintain it. Just like your house, the windows, the roofs, everything else we're doing in the, the buildings. So. Yep. 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 Okay, I just wanted to make sure that this, with what they've looked at now and what the decisions mm -hmm. are as far yep. as what to use for. The lot is where we're at with this 263 is the number that they've given us and we could see That's, a little bit of variance there depending could be a little on bit what of they one is bids could come in lower yep um, you know if we get in get in a certain spot and there's more gravel than than where we tested that helps yeah um, the other side would be if we open a spot up and here's a big pile of wet clay that we have to excavate yep. so I think these numbers are very good okay um, like like always with our projects, we hope to come under. So, you know, <laughs> I think Mark and Johnson has really done done yeah. very well of um, meeting a lot of their um, prices, if not majority of them under. Yeah, so, I would agree. So yeah. okay. Any other questions from Mike? Not for Mike. All right, All Mike. Right. I think we can. You can probably take a seat unless we have to call you back up for anything else. But I, <laughs> did you guys want to? I, I did. I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about how we're going to pay for this if we're going to do it, mm -hmm. right? Because um, there's we were talking about Fund 46 and what some of the competing priorities that we've asked. We asked for that information. I don't know, Rick, if you want to talk about those numbers at all on that sheet. Sure. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. I realize. Sorry. No. Um, no. I understand. And the, and I just want to be completely transparent. This is the June is our end of month reconciliation, just like any month is always uh, time intensive. And then it's also year end reconciliation. Um, Sue Gertis and Christine Berger have been working on that and preparing for the budget. Um, we did go through where we believe. Now there's some reconciliation that happens with regards to purchase orders or work that was done, when it was finished, and then when bills come in. So that's some of the, what's being reconciled. In addition, uh, anytime there's like Mike's budget for facility and grounds, if there is any surplus left, it could be um, put toward this project. Then we're building a new budget, right? Good news is, is that right now, Fund 46, we believe is gonna end the year very close to having about one million dollars saved uh, for capital uh, expenditures. In addition, your fund balance is remaining very healthy. We entered the year near the top of our board policy with regards to how much money we would set aside. We have a baseline that it has to be no less than two million and that we have to be able to pay our bills for three to four months. Uh, it does appear that our fund balance will be about six million dollars. Again, that's the most fluid number um, and that'll continue to be refined between now and the annual meeting in September and then your um, board uh, budget in October. Rick, can um, you just clarify the sure. fund 46, uh, you said one million dollars, is that including any costs that we need to incur for the move yet? Or is that? At this point, some of those are, we believe that all of the charges for the move and materials have been booked and um, charged against it. So they're sharing with me that that's been reconciled and that's where we're sitting. That's great. Yeah. Okay. 
That's um, it is, on. yeah, it, it's a much yes. better outcome. Um, some of this also plays out with regards to Mike's diligence with regards to the 10 year plan, being able to also um, include with our referendum taking care of infrastructure that then takes the burden off Mike's budget. And so this is kind of where those investments by our community, you taking time to set aside money on an annual basis. Remember, you contributed $125,000 to future capital this year. Um, future budgets, we probably won't be that aggressive just because we didn't get as much from the state, but that's for another meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, your fund balance is still um, well within um, board uh, guidelines. And I think both Sue and I, as we met today, we're very confident that if you chose to move forward, um, you would be able to address this um, through the budgeting process of fiscal year 24, some of Mike's operations, and then uh, Fund 46 to cover either Fund 46 or Fund Balance. It's really your choice. Do you guys want to jump in here with any yeah, questions? Yeah, I got a quick question. Rick, can you, um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Fund 46, we are limited to, to maintenance facility type expenditures for Fund 46. Capital expenses. Capital yep. expenses, yep. okay. Um, so Fund 46 and the dollars we have in there and the strategy when we started putting money away in there was to for faci uh, facility capital expenditures, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So I just wanted to make sure that, that uh, you know, we can't, you know, we can't use that money for, for salaries uh, you know, or benefits. That is for yeah, it's capital a expenditures. Yeah, it's a designated trust. It yeah. uh, was um, mothballed for five years. Now you're able to tap into right. it. Um, the bus, paving the bus garage is on part of that eligible list. Right. Um, mainly because we've talked about it for, for so long. I'll share my other comments or opinions later. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah. Anybody else want to jump in? I got another. So just with the the other the other competing priorities we talked. So the varsity track field is on the list, and just to kind of share with the community, is that something that foreseeable we'll have to probably do next summer? Is that is that the all indications are that yes, it will need to be um, redone to the base summer of 2024. If we if we choose to want to maintain it, right? Correct. And can you just share the price tag, kind of ballpark, what you think that might be? I think we estimated about 100, 110. Oh, 110, you know, and if, if you wanted to go with a whole uh, blue base, you'd probably get 150. I think the base is going to be fine. Might need some repairs, but I think that 100, 120 baseline would be a good, good solid number. And then the other thing on the list, there's two things. I'll save the STEM room, but the, the, the number three on this list that you sent out to us was about the potential maintenance for the Performing Arts Center. Is yeah, it's just the, it, it's a big building, right? And so mm -hmm. it is something that, um, again, is space that has a lot of electronics, um, pulleys and things like that. So this high school, as we've experienced over the last few months of uh, um, faucets breaking and things like that, the maintenance on this building is starting to increase. It's no longer new. Yep. And so we just want to make sure that we're, Mike's budget and all budgets are going to be restricted m moving into next year based on, remember we were our, our targeting that we needed 650 to stay static and the legislature gave us 325. So there are gonna have to be some restrictions, but we're well situated mainly, I think. Um, the future projects, I think Vision 2035, is gonna give us the ability to continue to prioritize, have staff, student, family voices, both on our learning environments, physical space, but also our green space and community space. I don't see any major shifts in those areas other than the ones you just spoke of. The track is something, I think Mike Koika, I, and Andrew Caudill would come back and believe that it is a community asset. I think it's something that we can't really enhance, but we should sustain. And so it is probably 100, 120 that you're gonna have to invest, most likely next year, 
um, based on it just uh, deteriorating sooner. Um, the STEM room is something that you had asked about last year and we had talked a little bit about it. But as we move into our buildings, STEM has two areas within the new middle school. They're completely outfitted and set for the instructional programming that we're going to provide. It is part of Vision 2035 to talk about is there any other enhancements how students learn or how you would, um, let's just say, kind of cr create that smooth pathway from middle school into high school. But I do believe that that's going to take at least a year to gather the voices and then to have input. So I really don't see any imminent um, move in that direction within two to three years. The reason we mentioned that is it was kind of a, uh, house, uh, a domino effect because one of the areas that would be a potential would be to move Mike Hoika's group out of the back of the school because it's still under the, uh, it wouldn't increase their footprint, it's under the roof and we could remodel that. Again, I really do think that's a three to five year vision from my perspective. Obviously, people's voices and your input will direct us as administration about how fast or what priority you place on that. So math, let's do some math. All right. So if we're at, if we're right around a million and we take out, say the 263 for the paving and potentially up to 120, maybe a little more for the track, we're still sitting right around $600,000 in, in Fund 46, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. That is better than I thought that, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, being at a million, I thought, you know, we still had to reconcile and take out all the moving expenses and all of that. I didn't realize that we were gonna be popping up yeah. close to that million dollars again. So that's really good news. Yeah. Um, what is the top of our fund balance that we can be at? Do we need to look at that policy and either up it? Because I know that there's kind of a range, or do we, and so it's just a question I have is do we need to spend some money from there because we have a policy on where it can go, oh. or is it something we need to relook at amongst yeah, ourselves? We're, yeah, we're not, um, it's, let's, I'd reframe it. I would say we're not going to be at the top okay. anymore, just okay. kind of foreshadowing what's coming, but I do believe. Um, we're going to have to be more conservative moving forward mm -hmm. um, just in looking at how fund balance is used because what happens is all of the money mm -hmm. and it, how the state works is that we're still receiving special education federal dollars mm -hmm. that are owed us they get booked to fiscal year 2023 so they're telling you you have it, mm -hmm. you have to book it and that shows as fund balance mm -hmm. even though it's not okay. and, well, Sue will be happy with this. Understand that fund balance is not the same as cash. Yeah. And so it's not like we have that much money okay. at any point in time. In fact, over just the month of June, it can drop all the way down to like 1.5 million and then it increases as money as comes get in. Money in. Okay. But between now and December is like a financial desert. Mm -hmm. yep. School districts do not get a lot of yep. money and that's why your fund balance is important so that we don't have to take that short-term yeah, loan. Right. Okay. And we've been able to stay out of that. I would say that Sue and I, based on the numbers that we have today, and we still have to go through the audit at the end of the month, we believe that we will still be able to not take a short-term um, loan. Um, if you think of the 260, if we went back to kind of putting $25,000 away into capital within five years, you would have saved the money that you invested. Um, and that kind of, as Mike talked about how phase one to five is really you start to fill cracks and maybe recoat mm -hmm. in about five years. Mm -hmm. So um, given all of that and some of the challenges we've had both on just um, injuries up there, um, I think the ability to mitigate um, some of the dust on the more technical, how. I mean, these are buses that run like computers. I really do believe it would be a wise investment, regardless of where you, the board's will is, um, mm -hmm. from plan two all the way to the original proposal. And just um, my opinion about where the money should come from, I'm, I'm most comfortable with it coming from Fund 46, I think, when we look at 
um, why we put that money aside. It was for these types of purposes. We were, you know, really fiscally responsible. We had saw this new opportunity, did it, and it's for these kind of purposes. If if the um, state keeps giving us, um, I guess, less money than we need in order to maintain our operations, um, we can't really take a lot of money. That um, Fund 46 doesn't cover everything, right, I mean, or anything. It's very earmarked to certain things. And so I feel most comfortable in uh, maintaining our fund balance that can be used for things like salaries if we needed to and stuff like that. So um, I, me personally, I'd prefer Fund 46 to use. I'd also prefer option one um, if we're talking about preferences. It's not a huge difference in cost. Um, I know, you know, it's $50,000, but I feel like it's kind of the right way to go, so. Pat, you anything to add? Um, I might just add, you know, from speaking from where the funds, you know, I'm gonna go to the track. Um, <clears throat> You know, unless somebody wins Powerball tonight, and 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 even if that's the case, just due to timing, you know, we can't we can't neglect the tract. Um, we just can't. And and I would I would be willing to bet after we go through the master planning and, and the long term range that that it's my advice that we don't abandon the facility anyway if if anything were to ever be done here or somewhere else so we should continue to maybe I, I, I don't like the word invest but invest in the upkeep of that facility will only be wise so we should assume we're gonna in, encumber that cost um, the asphalt, you know, I, I think uh, I think Dr. Spacuzzi just you know talked about injury talked about some of the you know things that it's gonna help um, you know we're one workers comp you know thing away for paying for it uh, when it comes to option one versus plan one and two you know the value is clearly there you know to do it all um, if you don't do it all you run the risk of ruining your base and what I believe is the most expensive part anyway so that's that's just my opinions um, I agree it should come from fund 46 I think that's what it's that's what it's there for and uh, we should keep our fund balance for things that we don't yet know are coming down the pipe Vicki uh, I don't really have anything else to add. I, I agree with Pat on, you know, we know we need to keep up um, what we do have. We don't want the track, that area, to become unusable. So we know we're going to be spending money on that. Fund 46 can be used for that. We've been, you guys have been saving. You were saving before I joined the board, and we've been able to stick away a fair amount since I've been here. So this is something that actually was brought up in the facilities mm -hmm. committee with the uh, with the citizens that participated. So um, yeah, I think we're asking our bus drivers to be careful. Well, let's make it easier for them to be careful getting in and out of the cars, in and out of the buses. Um, most of them are retired, so I, I think, yeah, it's, it's a good idea to make that area safe and maintenance easy for the buses, I guess, as we can with the way buses, ve all vehicles have changed these days. Um, they're changing faster than what the rest of us are, so. Yeah, if we gotta somehow try and keep dust out of them, I say we go ahead and do this. So, Helen. Yeah, I agree. Electric is coming down the pipe, so yeah, <laughs> that electric's not good. <laughs> dust, but I think option one is the best. Um, plan one and plan two, you're gonna have to pay some of those prices again. Um, that's in there because you're gonna have to get them out and get the equipment out there, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's option one would be the best option and I agree with the fund 46 so Mike can I add one little thing here too because I think so me and and well a couple of us maybe have talked um, offline fund 46 and and Rick I don't even know if it would be appropriate usage of there but when we look at the current referendum projects that are going on and and Vicki we were on the we were on the, the facilities committee that came up and prioritized those um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong though, that the thought of you, you two and Market and Johnson is we're still holding an appropriate amount of contingency for the completion of those projects. So it's not like money being spent out of 46 is going to you know, hamper our ability to cover unforeseen things as they come up. Is that, is, would that be accurate? Yeah, and that's, um, just want to um, 
just so we don't confuse the issue, I understand um, and just clarify with our community, the bus garage paving is 100% on the district, right. separate from, although it was talked about among the facility advisory committee. However, I think, Pat, your comment is, what if during the referendum we're short of um, either dollars to complete projects or we run into something unforeseen because we have old buildings, Yes, mm -hmm. we would have to dip into something which would be like Fund 46. Correct. So at this time, we did get an update. Uh, the uh, Market and Johnson does manage the and has set aside contingency. We did meet this week. We are monitoring that with them. They have advised us that heading into next year's summer projects, they are confident that the contingency set aside is going to be ample to cover any unforeseen um, based on their experience so far. They've been really happy with their engineers. They've been happy with the work that Mike's done. And all you got to remember, getting to the referendum, there were site plans and a lot of poking and prodding. And so they've been very comfortable um, with what's been set aside so far. Yeah, yeah they, they, they've been on site. Their engineers. Uh, through River Valley and Apex, before we got into these buildings, really dove into them and, and, and torched things apart. They grabbed my manuals, my books, my schedules. So we're trying to eliminate all the surprises. Mm -hmm. um, so we feel really comfortable, um, and I feel really comfortable with their contingency that they we kind of come up, this is the dollar amount that we're going to carry into it. Um, and when we started out, we, we kind of held projects back to make sure we are always staying on budget. Oh. And so we've already started adding some of those back in, you know, like LED lighting and more ceiling tile and stuff. So a lot of those things that we added back and, and those big things of boilers and stuff, are, they come in on budget. What, those were things we were kind of an unknown, the generator and stuff. So we don't foresee having to take any money out of 46 to cover any uh, short, shortcomings in this project. I think we've we've uh, evaluated things very well. The only thing that's really that would be kind of pop up is when we get down to the middle school, putting some air conditionings or something, or removing some windows. But I don't. We don't see anything big. Yeah. You know. But there's always going to be that something that comes up. Oh, well. I think our contingency is is more than adequate that we need going into next year. So. Thank you. That's great. <clears throat> uh, -huh. uh yeah, I, I well, I like to just thank Mark and Johnson for working with us because we got this thrown on us last month and we just were not ready to pull the trigger. We did not have enough information and it was, I, I'm, I'm appreciative that Mark and Johnson is willing to work with us so we could get this in this summer if we're going to vote on this. So that's number one. Two, um, great news on Fund 46 being at where it's at. I, I thought it was going to be, when, when I was doing my stupid math, I thought it was going to be much less money left over if we're going to cover both the track and the, and, and the bus garage. So I think, you know, we're sitting really strong. And Fund, 40, Fund 46, man, I mean, we didn't have this 10 years ago. We couldn't have done something like this. And having, having the money and having the, the ability to put money away for as long as we have, we're able to we're able to make these decisions, and this is a great great use of that money. Uh, as will the as will the the varsity track if we decide to approve that as well. So I, I think this is a really good news story. Um, I'm excited that we're able to do this, and I think we've been very responsible, kind of thinking it through for a month, and coming and getting all the information we needed to make a, a good intelligent decision. So kudos to the board. All right. Um, Someone, you want to make a motion? Um, I move to approve option one to be paid for from Fund 46, uh, revise an updated bid to pave bus garage parking lot. I'll second. We have a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Well done. Thank you. And now we'll move on to item F. Consider the purchase of an eight-seat van with wheelchair lift. Yep. And I do, do want to thank the way you worded that will make our finance director very happy and Clifton and Larson. So you hit all the, mm -hmm. the, the wording that was necessary. All right. So um, there is duly noted that we have um, a request 
to purchase a van. Um, the reason for the van is that it provides um, greater flexibility for the district with regards to the uh, smaller buses still require a CDL license. Um, unfortunately, the two vehicles that uh, Tim had identified have, are no longer available to us. Um, but the structure and the need didn't go away. So what we're looking at is I just wanted to kind of walk you through how it would get paid for, why we believe it's essential, and the rationale. Um, take any questions that you have and then talk a little bit about how it can be funded. Um, the primary uh, challenge that we've had is that we have one current van right now that has had a lot of use. Um, we are looking for it to have a wheelchair lift. That is to allow us for um, athletics, uh, field trips, um, sometimes we have short routes that would allow us to be able to transport students versus having a bigger bus. The challenge, however, is that because we are not looking for this to be 100% specific to special education, special education can't be the payee of that van. Um, however, in a lot of research and working with DPI, um, Sandy Strand and Sue Gertis and I sat on a call for an hour with DPI. When you purchase a bus like this, you are able to use federal dollars to pay for the differential of the cost of the van and a van with a chair, chair lift. Um, the estimated value of that ranges from seven to $10,000. So um, part of this I'm mentioning because we are coming back next month to you to talk about the need for an upgrade on a special ed bus. And at that time, it'll all come from special ed. This one is a special uh, bus that can help special education, but is for our teams, you know, the golf teams, things like that, where you don't have 30, 40 kids participating. Um, the reason that it's still on the board agenda and we decided, we learned yesterday, we had reserved this. They knew that we had a board meeting and we said that we would get them an answer whether or not you voted it up or down by tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, um, a colleague sold it and we were informed. So the way that we're thinking about it is if it is something that you're willing for us to entertain, given that it has taken Tim, he's been looking at this this type of van that's about an eight passenger van, has the, all the uh, requirements that we would need for transportation and provides some flexibility. Um, that means he doesn't have to have a CDL licensed driver and we can have uh, more people accessing it. The revised proposal that Tim and I were looking at is that if he was able to find something in a set price range, um, so the one that we had looked at was 85,000 miles at a price of 37. Um, again, seven to 10,000 would be covered by federal flow through dollars and then the rest would be on the district. Um, what we're looking at is that we would have to build that into our budget or use fund balance. Um, again, how quickly these come on the market and how quickly they're going off the market makes it really hard to sit in between as you as we just experienced. Mm -hmm. And so what we were looking at is if you were willing to give us a revised proposal that we would continue to search out, if it fell that we could bring it to the board, we obviously would, but if it met the parameters of being within, and again, I, I started with 40,000 if it wanted to be a range of 40 to 50, that we're looking that it has to have a wheelchair um, and it's eight seats um, uh, at least in order for us to add to our fleet. Helen, you got any questions on this one? Um, I guess my only Thomas. question was um, the 85,000 for miles seems a bit high um, for one of these vehicles, it, it, unless it's a diesel. I would assume like that, so I, you're getting around the area where you're gonna need maintenance. So if we, my question would be, if we went up a little bit on the price, would we, could we get a more reasonable um, mileage that we can, it's a long, it'll mm -hmm. be a long-term investment for the district instead of the higher 
mileage. Yeah. That would be my only question. That and, that, my and that's comment. that logic is true. Um, I can't tell you that the two vans that we had scouted out, Tim did see and looked at both of them. Tim is a train mechanic, does all the work on our buses, and we have Aaron Marshall. It is a van that he's very comfortable working on. Um, he did inspect both. We actually had one and test drove it for a few days down in the district. Um, he was confident that it was in really good repair. He would be somebody I would follow on investigating. I think you're right, the lower the miles, it's gonna be more expensive. Um, it's still a little early for us uh, to tell you how comfortable I am of going too far above 40, given some of the um, still challenges we have in building the budget. So I, I, I didn't want to overreach while we have so many unanswered questions, um, but also knew that if something came up and we were in between board meetings, it's either an emergency board meeting or the possibility of losing something. Okay, Vicki? I don't have any questions. Tanya? Um, uh, just a follow-up question there, which is, I mean, this isn't a van that we plan on using every day. It's just kind of more of an option. It's related to, I mean, instead of taking a big old bus and all the gas and all that stuff, we've got another option. So we wouldn't be, I'm assuming, racking up as many miles as we might be on a typical bus with it. That's fair. It wouldn't be, as, it would be more um, targeted in specific yeah. routes. Okay. Um, and then my other question is just to clarify the seven to ten thousand dollar reimbursement from Fe is that a reimbursement from federal funds for the lift because of the potential need for mm -hmm. students with disabilities and stuff like that. Correct. So if it's a forty thousand dollar van, we'll get really like a thirty thousand ish dollars because we'll have some of it reimbursed. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Um, questions for me. So um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to build off of Tanya. So when you say federal flow through. <laughs> Is that basically the same as cash, or is that just mean that we have to spend less federal money somewhere else? Yeah, so we're allocated. Um, next year, we're expected to receive 290000 in federal flow through. Mm -hmm. It has specific stipulations. It has to be dollars that um, go over and above to meet the needs of students with special needs, um, and it can't supplant kind of the overall operations or dollars for any student coming into a sure. public school. Um, it is something that uh, is allowed for specific purchases and we, um, like I mentioned, kind of next month we'll be coming back because our current uh, 20 to 27 seat bus for special ed, special ed only, has over 230,000 miles. We need a new one. And so we already have received approval from the federal government and the state to use flow through dollars. You have to get permission first, then you have to go to your board and ask for permission to use that. Um, Sandy and, and Sue have worked on the budget. They believe that this is a good use of it. Um, we do get state aid as well, and the state aid is what um, assists in paying some of the um, special education teachers' salaries, the reimbursement. Again, not as much as was promised initially, but you can't double dip, meaning if you put a teacher's salary, special ed, uh, school psychologist, on state aid, you can't then shift it over to federal. Okay, so I think I, think I understand what you said, and so the Fed flow through, it's not the same as cash. Um, we, we are still underfunded by the federal government and the state government for special education. So spending seven to 10 grand on a lift while we can use federal funding, we're still underfunded our cost, right? Okay, so that's just, that is what it is. Now, um, I'm gonna try to put these in order. My next question was, do you really need a lift? If that's the case, and I think what I just heard is that next year, the, the the specialized bus with a lift is going to be its replacement time. Do we feel that this van replaces that and will we still have to make that capital purchase next year? Um, we still will have a specialized special ed smaller bus than the large 77. That okay. is a necessary thing. However, we do have 
about a half dozen students who have mobility issues and are in chairs. And so having another vehicle that allows us during field trips or transportation um, outside of a bus, because those buses are on the longer route. Yep. If we have to do something to a sporting event, if we have to do something to the theater or to um, in between schools or to the childcare, this would give them greater flexibility okay. that we don't okay. currently have for students. So we chalk that up to we believe it's a need to serve to service the students that we have. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, are we still planning on buying? A, so when I look at when I look at the the narrative up there, are we still planning on buying a bus this year? That is that is part of our regiment because okay. it's uh, we have. Basically, our buses are about 20 years old mm -hmm. as we cycle through. Yep. So we are building with the assumption, or we're building the budget with the assumption that we'll have to buy a regular ed bus. And the costs have gone up. So you, usually we've set aside about 100. Mm -hmm. We're estimated to be about 110 this year. So if I boil this all down, I mean, it's, 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 it's a cost we have to bear. We're not going to get additional funding for it. We believe we need this. We believe we need additional capacity to service our students, and then we believe that this is a more economical way to do it with greater flexibility when it comes to bus drivers and some of those things. It, it and, might, and, and I would say more on the latter, right? It is more yeah. economical. We don't have to run the bigger buses. Also, because anybody can drive it, it's a little bit easier to find a driver where yeah. some of the challenges are is that our, the age of our drivers, right, are yeah. that they are not full-time employees. And they're on other routes. And I'm just, I'm, you know, in my mind with words and not math, I'm trying to justify the ROI here. Uh, you know, third, the thirty to the forty thousand dollar investment, and I don't know how what that equates to in gas and licensures and all that stuff. But um, again, Rick, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is, is this a nice to have, or are we currently not able to service the students that we have? Mm -hmm. um, I would be happy to defer uh, to next month to come back on this um, with regards to helping either um, Tim and Sandy give you more information. Um, the reason we decided to keep it on here is we actually had something in hand that we've been waiting for. Um, now that it has gone away, um, we would like the flexibility, but by August, um, Myself and Sue will be in a much better position to tell you what our finances are heading into the next year. Yeah, so the last thing I'm trying to do is try to hamstring anybody from making a good decisions. And that's why so I hesitate on saying that we need to wait. I guess maybe I'll let the rest of the board members talk. Just that's where my head's at right now. I can, I can speak from my experience with having vans in our district. So we, each of our high schools have two vans. Our coaches drive it. So we all get, I have actually my team, I have them all, if their program teachers get trained on how to drive it too. And so it adds a ton of flexibility into our programming. So coaches drive it like golf, they drive it, right? They don't, they don't take the big bus. We don't have enough buses to reserve. You gotta find bus drivers It costs more money. You don't need all that space. Um, but so I think like that just adds flexibility and, and helps with planning and stuff like that. The other piece that's really nice, and when we talk about like a lift or not having a lift, is um, special education students have to do transition planning. So um, in high school and stuff, and part of that's like rec and leisure. It's required, federally required, transition, like all that kind of stuff, cooking, cleaning, all that stuff. So it does add a lot of like, we need to take the kids to the grocery store and teach them how to shop. That's part of like our responsibility for special ed kids. Well, do, having to get the big box and get a bus driver and pay for all that stuff like if you could add up the economical value of that kind of stuff but it also just goes to really like having a lot of flexibility in how we meet the needs of our students too mm -hmm. for, for us anyways Rick I'm, I'm if you want my opinion I'm comfortable with do not I, I don't want to be the roadblock as a, as a board it sounds like this is a is a worthwhile purchase here uh, I, I'd be comfortable making a motion tonight. My only question, Rick, is, is, I, I, would we be? I, I worry about the, the number forty. I mean, the the one you guys were looking at had eighty five plus thousand miles on it, and that was priced at thirty seven. I don't want to have to come in. If you found something that you really liked and it was at forty one, I mean, you wouldn't be able to buy it, right? Right. So I mean, 
is 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 forty a comfortable number, or I mean, can we just trust that you guys are going to find the right thing that works for you, for for the for the school district, and maybe bump that up to forty five? Would that be enough? Well, what was I'm sorry the ceiling the price it's just for a this ceiling. last one was thirty seven thousand, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the other two? It said they looked at other two. I think they were both within very okay. within a two thousand dollars of each. Okay. I mean, I would, I would hate to lose out on something that is in really good shape and, and, and we didn't authorize enough money for a ceiling. And, and we know, I think, I think I, I, at least I, my opinion is I, I trust Tim and I trust you that you guys are going to make the right call on what, what's a good investment here. So if, if, if it helps to at least give you a little, bit more, a little bit more room at the top in case you do come across one, I know it's, finding a used vehicle itself is, is hard to do these days, yeah. so well, let alone in a, high demand right now. Right. Um, I personally, I mean, if you again, if you guys are, if the will of the board was to give us a little bit more latitude, and you wanted to make a motion tonight, um, I thought I think that both um, Helen's statement and yours of, you know, Tim and I are pretty conservative. We try to get the best, but to not lock us in. You know, you, I would say maybe a cap of fifty thousand. We're really trying to target that forty thousand. Um, obviously, we don't have anything now, but he is continuing to look, and so it is something that you know our goal would be to continue to use the money that's available um, and not surprise anybody. Um, but I would feel better putting a cap on it. Yep. Um, but I could see it being increased a little bit just because if we went, found something with fewer miles that would give us a little bit longer time, um, that may be prudent. Rick, I, I heard you say earlier that you like $40,000 was the number that you saw within the budget, though, where you knew for sure like we didn't really have to pull any odd strings. We're already looking at reducing things. And so, I mean, if we go up to 50, that's putting more pressure on you and, and, and just the whole budget. <laughs> So my other thought is, I mean, I like, I don't like tying our hands with like such a tight cap, but at the same time, I think it says this isn't a immediate necessity mm -hmm. in order to service our kids. This is something that's going to give us more flexibility, probably save us money down the road, um, and open some flexibility with you know how we service kids. But like, it doesn't have to happen right now or this month or next month. Mm -hmm. So I'm comfortable leaving it at the forty thousand dollars and saying. You guys are going to shop, and if you if you come back to us in two months and say, "Look, this we figured out the budget. We did the uh, we did all the stuff that we have to do for the next budget. We can go up to fifty thousand dollars." I think that's something easy to bring back to us and and tell us. Yeah. Me personally, but so I have a clarifying question because we um, talked a little bit about um, special education and how that would help, and then we talked about like kind of teams and how that would help that. We currently have vans in our um, in our district right now, right? Yeah, we have uh, a specific van with a chairlift. Yes. But we have other vans. Uh, more for food service that goes back and forth, but it's not um, student safe. So we just have one district van for then. students. For students, okay. Yeah. So I guess I'm not sure where we're going with this. Are we going to make a motion here to approve a certain dollar amount up to 40? Is that is that comfortable for everybody? It is for me. Okay, I guess if we have if we have one in our if we have a van currently that can be used for that it's hard for me. It would be hard for me to support that, I guess, because that would be an extra. Because I, I know that it would make our program, like, we, I'm sure we would use it, but if we have one that we're currently, we can currently use for that, unless I'm wrong, right? Like, I, so clarify that if I'm, if I'm misspeaking, misspoken, yeah, but. I would, again, I would have to defer. It wasn't a, like, how often is there a conflict with being able to access, yeah. you know, a, a bus or the, the van? Um, it is something I can definitely come back and have that information for you in August if that was um, essential. Well, maybe that's the route we go as we get yeah. some clarification. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm hearing a couple of different questions, some clarification. Sure. Be nice to hear kind of what it would be used for, how often it's a conflict, and then maybe we could at that time you would have more information about where 
if we could go to fifty thousand dollars in the budget if needed. So maybe that's the better route. And if it's used within the programs, current like if they use that because mm -hmm. we have a van now. If they're not currently using it to take students um, out of the community, then that would be a kind of a pause for me as well. So to get that information to check that they're doing that or if that's where they want to move to, that would be great. So that would be good information to know. I guess maybe last thing for me is is and again I, I feel like I'm maybe presented an unnecessary roadblock here. I I do know of some very certain circumstances where Tim and administration has had to scramble this year. We don't have enough bus drivers. We don't have enough people. There was potentially uh, canceling games, canceling choir concerts. I don't want to trip over a, a, a dime or a dollar to pick up a dime here. I I maybe wish and maybe shame on me for not asking enough questions leading up to this. I wish we had a little better sense of even if it was an estimated ROI though on you know if we had a little more just return information on you know some potential monies we could save or, or cost avoidance. Um, my my personal opinion is we're going to end up getting the information presented to us in August. It's all going to make sense and we're going to say go. So I hate delaying another month, but I also I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't have. That's that's where I'm at right now. Um, and and to be honest, I I, um, I think the reason that we didn't want to just take it off when we were informed last night mm -hmm. was we had something there. It was already on the agenda. And allows you to have this conversation. Um, I I'm completely um, fine with being able to bring it back in August and have some of this additional information. Right. Tim would have it. Um, it allows, just so you know, we have an information discussion section to kind of explain uh, an event that happened last week mm -hmm. with regards to, or I'm sorry, last month with regards to um, if no one makes a motion, all right, there is no extra thing that has to happen. So you have a choice. Either you can make a motion or you can move forward on your agenda. Does Mike have to ask, is there a motion three times? I don't know if it has to be no. three times. We can add, <laughs> I think if there's no motion. Just like, uh, if there's no motion, we can move on and we can we can okay. hit it next month. But why don't you just clarify? Is there a motion? Is there a motion to be made here? Anybody want to make a motion? And be clear, Mike. You can give a motion, right? You can make a motion. Sure. Okay. I just want to make. Yep. You can motion. You can motion the table. You can uh, motion to defer. But if you make no motion, I can call the question right now if, I want, if you want me to. Yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> Or one of you can. All right. So no motion has been made. Anybody want to make a motion on this at all for next month? Otherwise, we'll just table it. No, there's no if there's no, no motion. No tabling. Yeah, it's a, no tabling is a motion. But so is there any motion? Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. Item G. All right. Favorite thing. Guess what? Came, guess what came today? The new drop of all the Neola policies. Oh. Mm. <laughs> So, but this is the second reading. Um, I wanted to thank the feedback that you gave. Wanted to make sure that you had access to um, the updates. I wanted to, again, we're not gonna go through every single one, but I did wanna make sure that the um, ones that we had spoken about, um, changes were made and wanted to make sure that you understood. Um, the first one was about attendance. There was a language in there that, you know, kind of it, uh, it's a kind of oxymoron, right? The student isn't showing up and therefore then you're gonna suspend them. Um, we did drop that language. The administrative team is on board with that and so that was taken care of. Um, you did have the administration of medication and the emergency care that was presented. <coughs> and revi uh, reviewed by um, Jessica Studi, our registered nurse. Um, we did talk um, specifically about promotion, placement, and retention. I would be happy to pull that up if you wanted to see that. Um, I did want to let you know that part of this is, first and foremost, that promotion, placement, and retention is required, right? And it specifically says about grades three to four and um, I believe eight to nine. However, during the legislative session, there was a lot of conversation about state testing with early literacy. If students were not proficient on the third grade exam, districts were gonna be required to retain students. Fortunately, because there is no good educational, educational empirical evidence that that's a pro-social thing to do, 
that did not get into legislation. However, there is some modifications, and I didn't hear there was rumor that the governor was going to sign the literacy language. It did get signed? Okay. In there, there is some discussion about things that you all pointed out with regards to what is the process. And in Prescott, we always include our families. So we do have family uh, and um, teacher conferences at every level. We have state and local assessments. All of that information is provided to families. And so there is some discussion in the new legislation that students that are at basic or quote unquote to be defined, not at grade level, and they have to define that yet and then put that information out to schools that you must guarantee that they receive intervention. Well, that is really what Prescott has been about. That is what collaboration time is. It will not affect our practice, but I just wanted to let you know that it is required to have a prom promotion, placement, and retention. We added that re a retention statement that it is not in the best interest of students and that in Prescott we have a range of continuum services and that we include families in that discussion. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you understood that that was added. We have the student anti-harassment and then the casual contact of communicable diseases. And then the new one was just that separated out uh, taking a moment of silence from religious activities and so that they were not uh, commingled. So with that, are there any um, follow-ups with regards to the second reading? I'll just open it up here. I do. Um, thank you for making changes. And I had a question about the naloxone one as well, about medication being distributed. And our team was awesome, and they assured me that um, that is in our policy. I was just going to suggest that it's, it's in two places in our in um, to be clear, it's our administration of medication and, and emergency care policy. The word in there is Narcan, which is like a brand of naloxone. So it should say naloxone because that's the actual medication. Yeah. I know why they changed that because that's the brand we have. But what if we have something else down the road? Um, naloxone. Well, and I yeah. think it, in all honesty, we can put or its equivalent or I mean, or just it's, naloxone because naloxone is the medication and there's lots of brands that are FDA sure. approved okay just because yeah. I mean otherwise we're saying like you can only have Bad Advil bill. right versus yeah okay anyways otherwise I thought it was great okay so basically there's, if you look on yeah, um, there's two. this it, it just has the very specific mm -hmm. brand name, and all yeah. we're doing is to say, put it to, um, The type of medicine is okay. naloxone. So just if, if, uh, if you move forward with this, if you just make that as a friendly amendment to the current one, we will accept that. That'd be great. Anything else? Tanya, I'm glad we have you as our policy <laughs> uh, police officer. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right. Um, we yeah. We'll it, we'll take a motion here. So maybe frame that up. I can. Yeah. I move to approve the second reading of the updated NEOLA policies with the addi addition of changing the word Narcan to naloxone in policy five three three zero administration of medication and emergency something because Rick's over it right now emergency care. All right. I can second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries item H, consideration of an electronic monument at the Prescott Middle School. All right, everything you On wanted. On St. Croix Street. Mm -hmm. Yep, 1220 <laughs> St. Croix. Um, so obviously, um, well, let's, my computer's not playing nice. <clears throat> See if it comes up. 
technical difficulties, but it's coming. There it we is. go. All right. So um, Graphic House is somebody that has done all of our lettering, also works with the city of Prescott and has updated many of their signs. They've been a very good um, and uh, assistant with us in walking through. Um, what we're asking is that at Prescott Middle School, in the new location, there used to be what looked like a gas station post. It's now down by, um, Cab has ownership of it down at Varsity Field. So when you're out in front of the gymnasium, to the right of the main entrance on St. Croix, there used to be a lit sign. It was, an electro it was electronic for lighting, but no electronic wording. Um, and it basically just had the logo of the high school. Um, it, when the high school moved, we took it out and just buried the electric cable. Um, one of the questions has come up is that obviously we're putting the school letters, Prescott Middle School will be lettered on the building just like all of our other schools, was whether or not to consider doing a monument um, and having a more, a bigger sign that's out in front of the school hopefully to cut down on some of the confusion, especially since we have some varsity athletics on um, two locations, right? Um, I, de I decided that it really required um, kind of board action from versus just Mike and myself. This is one proposal. Um, the bid is in. It was something that if we wanted to have it in for school, it would need to be <coughs> approved tonight. If it's something that you're not able or uh, wanting to do, um, we can always come back. One of the only alternatives, but it would be more expensive. Oh, I, Mike, I didn't see you there, sorry. I thought you had left me and I was like, oh, I gotta carry this all the way. <laughs> the other um, option we had talked about was whether or not some schools have these LED signs where there's just a little bit of a scroll. We did not get a bid on that at this point because we knew it was more expensive. Also, this isn't infrastructure. So this would be something that would be at the district's expense. And so we just wanted to make sure that um, although it's a nice design, it is higher and it could provide lack of um, confusion for some people. We weren't guaranteed that it was ready for prime time, but we wanted to kind of share with you a couple things. One, there is a base there. So the structure, that's why it would be placed there and there is electrical current there. Um, the other question is, is that the best location? Um, just because that's where everything was. But if we move it, it is cha-ching, cha-ching, right? If we want to put it somewhere else and it's gonna be um, lit up, we would have to move power. And so the only other place, at least from administrative discussion and athletics was to put another alternative place to put it would be in between the two driveways that would be kind of where you buses pull in and, and fans pull in so i'll sit back ask any questions that you have i think the i'll pull up what the um cost was i think it was nine grand but let me double check nine thousand twenty-five. Yeah. okay I don't know, Pat, do you want to start us on this one? Any questions? Yeah, it, I love it. I think, I think. I, I mean, wayfinding is important. Um, I think, you know, whatever, you know, architecture, branding, you know, is important. I, I honestly, you know, right now though, I don't, for me, I don't see the value. I just assume personally not spend $9,000 on this. I don't know that we're gonna get the value. What I would rather see um, is, Let's get through the projects that we know we got to get through. Let's let's find out where we're at. Let's make sure we can take care of what we have to. And then um, if we do elect to do something, you know, maybe I'm not saying this isn't the place to do it. There's already a foundation and stuff there, but you know, maybe let's let's do it right. That's that's where I'm at right now, Mike. Tanya. Yeah, I mean, I, I could wait on this. I, I'm, I agree with Pat. We could look and see kind of what everything comes in. If we do have any surprises down the road, um, make sure that we're not spending 
money on something like this, which really is just about, you know, it's name recognition and stuff like that, but, and, and looks and feasibility and stuff like that, but it's not necessarily a necessity. I would say though, um, coaching, when I set up and set a game up at these fields, I probably have, I mean, half the coaches call me and say, what field are you at? This is what school? And they, I mean, it is, it is an issue. Um, so I, I see it as being something that is really practical too down the road, uh, especially, I mean, I don't remember, was it five, six years? That's three different schools that have been there in the past five or six years. So it is, it's confusing for community members. I have community members ask me a lot, which one's this school now? Which one's that? And it's just gonna get more confusing next year. So so I, I'm not totally opposed to it um, happening now either. And me personally, I don't wanna add more money to it. I think that's a great corner to have it at. I mean, yeah, there's maybe better corners. I don't know, that's probably the most visible one. You pass that road basically when you're getting there. So it makes sense to me there, but. <laughs> yeah, the confusion as to what school where mm -hmm. is uh, it's real is always kind of the uh, beginning of a conversation when you're talking about our schools. So um, yeah, yeah. I I mean I I think putting the lettering on the building itself right now. I, Sticking a sign just where we have the space for it and the electric for it just seems. I guess I'd kind of like to think about this a little more because we do then have the other school that we should then put something else on. Mm -hmm. If we're going to put a sign at one school, we should put something on the other school. Um, so I'm okay with waiting until we find out, and not even really find out what we. I mean, where we're at with money-wise, with all the referendum projects, I think just wait and see where we end up. And, and we've got staff, we've got students. Once everything starts getting used, maybe this isn't the best spot. Or maybe we need two signs at that school. And maybe we need a couple corners marked. Um, I don't know. I think we just kind of wait. I guess I would feel better waiting and seeing. And like I said, we've got two schools that are switching, so I think we need to designate both of those somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, and I guess just to add on, if um, we are doing um, kind of a study of our facilities right now, like how we're using spaces in the future, your 2035 study, mm -hmm. um, and so I would hate to buy a sign and then the building be something else down the road, which I don't anticipate, but like what if? And same thing yeah. if you talk about the next year intermediate school, if that yeah. building were to change and then we buy a sign. So yeah, I mean, it, it, maybe it's something that aligns better with that group and, and stuff too. Well, but. there was um, something someone had mentioned to me and I'm like, uh, would be a great idea. We should just name our schools, not give them the designation of high school, middle school, intermediate. We've got Malone Elementary. We know when someone talks about Malone, which school they're talking about. So maybe that's something we need to consider. Maybe that's something we give the kids. Hey, what do you want to name your school? Come up with, you know, as a history project or something to figure out who in our community they should name a school after. And then, then if grades get switched around, all of that gets swapped, then that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. just an idea. I like it. Helen? Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is at the top of my priority list either. So, I think this, uh, it's a gorgeous sign. And eventually, once we get the plan down the road, the long-term plan, I think it would make sense. But right now, I'm okay with All right. Yeah, I mean, I would have been fine approving it tonight, too. But I'm not, I'm not passionate about it. Sounds like the rest of the board isn't really on board with it. And one thing I, I do have a question on is w the placement where it is right now. How far away is that? Like I know we, at one point we talked about putting, that would be a potential location for a second gym on that site, on the, on the south side. Would it interfere with that? No, okay, just curious. Yeah, so I, I mean we can. We can practice our information discussion right now. Yeah, we can. Would anybody like to make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we can move on. All right. 
Um, but I do. I, I, it's probably worth revisit. We're going to revisit this. I don't think it's 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 not going away. At some point, we got to get some signage up. Mm -hmm. at, definitely at mm -hmm. this building, the, the that building, the middle school, mm -hmm. and and move forward. So I I don't think it goes away. I just will push it out. I guess so. Sounds good. All right. All right. Um, we kind of um, we actually executed this twice tonight since last month, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of ended up with some confusion, and we wanted to kind of come back and just make sure that as a board you're clear about kind of what your role and how you um, work with Maria and myself to make sure that we follow procedures of making sure that the agendas are duly posted. Maria, make sure that they're in with the Prescott Journal, your uh, designated paper a week ahead. Um, we also post it to the website and that's available. And then also we come and run through business and information. Um, it is possible that typically a lot of things that are on a business item get voted on because there's been information and discussion and then we move it up. It just so happens that we've been in a period of rapid um, change and some things like having the ability to buy a van or um, school switching and then trying to figure out, all right, now we get, have to have signage, getting the bids and everything, um, it's kind of coming to fruition. But just because it's listed as a business item doesn't require a board to make a motion. And so we just wanted to walk through kind of what are your Robert's rules or Bobby's rules are, how we post, we just mentioned that, and then kind of the cascading, if a motion <coughs> is made, then what are some options? And I'm gonna turn it over to Mike, uh, just to kind of walk through how, if, you, if you're required to make a motion, and then if you, if you don't make a motion, what we do, if you do <laughs> make a motion, what are some options you have? Yeah, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, you guys. I, I, honestly, I just realized I was gonna have to kind of walk through this today, so. Um, it, obviously, we've done it twice tonight where we just do not make a motion and we move on. So as long as we don't make a motion, then there's really no action to be taken. Right? It's, it's when we do make a motion, what happens, right? So um, the, the simplest case is you make a motion in a second and then you vote on it one way or the other, yes or no, and, and we move on. Um, however, what else is on here, Rick? Uh, yeah, the motion requires a second. If there is no second, then it's, then it's not considered. So somebody can make a motion if nobody seconds it, then it's it's really the same as no action at that point, right? So um, if the if there if there's a second, then we have to we have to either pass it, not pass it, or I guess if we don't vote, then we have to we have to table it. I don't know how, how would you do that? Would you have to make a motion to table it then? No, nope. so that's that's where we got into the gray area, right? So any of you during a discussion, if you wanted to basically table something, you have the right to do that, which takes it out of further discussion. And so there are times where a board member would say, I don't want to have further discussion on this, I'm going to table it for another meeting. And then once that's made, it does need to then be voted on. So you can't further discuss the issue. It's been motion for a table and then you vote on that motion. On the table. On the table. Okay. Then you can, when you table it, it can be for a specified amount of time or uh, it had to be, it can be two things, right? It can be for a specified amount of time. And so Maria had worked with WASB, which is your mothership for school boards and also their legal team. She was aware and had all the information for tabling. It's just that there was no motion um, on that last one and mm -hmm. kind of, we were unsure what to do, um, but we did cl clarification and we just wanted to kind of bring that one to all of your attention, but also just to communicate that out to our community. 
Great. I, I, I don't think I've ever been on a board meeting where we've ever done a table. I think it's just either been we move on, haven't made a motion, or there was a motion and no second, or we do business as usual and make a motion a second and then vote. But if it, I guess if it ever comes up, to, we'll probably have to rediscuss it again anyway. So, um, what else, Rick? Is that I mean, closed sessions. You know, we're we use them when we have to, yep. uh, and when the state allows us to. And it's usually around per personnel discussions or negotiations or legal issues. Correct. Um, anything else? Any questions or clarifications among members? Yeah. Let's move on. Anybody got any questions? Are we good? All right, let's move on. Item B, referendum. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to put up some slides while I talk. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate has been partnering with Mark and Johnson. Um, they are hitting every mark that they had <coughs> shared with us from giving us updates on both the draw schedules and where we are financially. Um, they meet with us on a weekly basis. Each building and its subcontractors are meeting on a weekly basis because subcontractors are not um, the same across all three buildings. In addition, Mike and I on a bi-weekly basis then meet um, with the architect and engineers. Um, we are now in the turning and pivot um, period. Uh, a lot of the things have been deconstructed and are being reconstructed. Um, you'll see the cafeteria with all the asbestos tiles moved. This is now the library before and after um, at the intermediate. Um, the band room has been carpeted um, and then at the middle current middle school, the bathrooms have been um, set up for ADA compliance. Um, the STEM room has been adjusted. Um, we are on schedule. Um, things are going as expected. They've been very accommodating um, and clear. And then on a weekly basis, we've been able to get um, photos and an update. And we've been able to get that out to all of you. We've been including our administrative assistants. So when they come back and um, we're starting to get um, excited with regards to just kind of our orientations and open houses. The one thing that is still a challenge for us is that if you drove by at um, 1220 uh, St. Croix, you would have seen some of the big machines are coming in. Um, the parking lots are gonna take time. The same machines are gonna be used across all three, um, uh, I'm sorry, at two of the locations and now up at uh, the bus garage. As they ping back and forth, the 1220 future middle school is going to have a large trench and tile uh, drain tiles put in both by the football field and closer to the school um, so there will be a lot of trenching that'll go on um, we have been informed that the final asphalt will be laid on the 28th of august so we are going to have some challenges um, and i'll be nip and tuck with regards to being able to get people in for orientation nights. Uh, the principals have been informed and they're kind of making their adjustments. Um, the middle school will still have our uh, eighth grade uh, uh, student mentors come in and train on the 15th to 16th because the, the um, school will be ready to do that and then to show students around. We know that there is a football game on August 18th and we are currently working with uh, Monarch to identify what stage they'll be at on whether or not we can have and how we would park and what adjustments we'll do. Mike, myself, and Andrew Caudill, who's on vacation, will be meeting quickly. Um, we just updated um, Mark and Johnson just to kind of make them aware. The varsity team does practice up here. Uh, middle school does practice down there, but the coaches are willing to migrate up here. So. Um, otherwise, we've been very happy with the progress that's been going on um, and wondered if you had any questions or follow-up for Mike or myself. Anybody have any comments or questions here? Yeah, Alan? so one of my questions is you just said the 28th is when we think the parking lots are going to be poured or mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, how long and are they going to be set up, be able to be on right after because we have... Um, 
return to learn on the 30th. 30th, right. So that's two days. Yeah, they're aware that the school has to be, the punch lists are scheduled for the first week of August. Um, it really is the parking lots um, that'll be nip and tuck. Um, but they understand that it's a hard start with uh, August 30th. <laughs> so Unfortunately, teachers... it's the only outdoor big activity left, right? Yeah. And the weather's been perfect up to this point. So our teachers will be able to get into their classrooms, set up, and be ready um, before that 30th without... Marketing and Johnson's been very accommodating and working with us. And so the goal, our teachers, um, we are working site by site, classroom by classroom on that. Um, some teachers have already kind of been able to get into certain ones already. Um, and we'll have more information as we get closer into August. But it was the last um, scheduling piece. Um, and it, Monarch is doing a lot of projects around. And so we just recently were nailing down timelines. Um, In another week or two, we'll have timelines Finishing products are going on, the flooring, the cabinetry going in, they're starting to put bathroom fixtures in, toilets and sinks. Um, once we start getting to that and we start getting into the cleaning, well, we have to do our, we have to we do our cleaning after everybody's done. Um, we'll still have doors put on, stuff like that. But we'll have a really good handle when the teachers can come back in. Um, we do have a, a, a date with Market Johnson that we want to be to a punch list for the first part of August. So that means the majority of stuff is done and all so we get in plenty properly. So it's 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 scheduled very tight but it's doable. I just want to repeat real over so people can hear um, what you said, which I think one of the, the things I heard you say was within about a week or so, we're going to have much clearer timelines for staff on when they can come in and stuff like that. And just for all of our staff that are listening, um, hopefully that's reassuring. But it sounds like you're finishing up like that first week in August, finishing some stuff up. You guys want to be able to get in there and then you'll be able to have more clear timelines. So perfect. That's tight timelines, but good weather so far, so we'll keep hoping. Anything else from the board? Comments? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Uh, looks like item C is an awareness on the budget and audit updates. Yes, yeah, so a lot of things hinge, you know. Um, obviously, our number one priority is student learning and continuous improvement. Um, it's contingent that we have the right resources and money to put into our personnel and also then into programs. As you know, um, the legislation was passed. We'll be finishing or beginning our audit on the end of July, July 31st into the first week of August. We will be coming back to you to schedule the, in August, you have to announce the annual meeting um, that then has a 30-day process. Maria has that timeline out. Um, it allows our preliminary budget to be posted, and then the board takes final action on uh, fiscal budget no later than October 31st. Typically, we do it at the third Wednesday meeting, assuming that all of the information is available to us and we can make it on time. Anything? Board? We should state that we're probably aiming for September 27th is probably the recommendation as we come back next month. Okay. Allows you to see it uh, the week ahead, present it to the community, and then finalize it in October. All right. Let's move on. Uh, we're moving on to item eight, recognition of visitors. Anybody in the audience that would care to be recognized? No? Nope. All right. Thank you. We'll move on and uh, item nine is to entertain a motion to close session following exception to open meeting. The board will consider a motion to convene in closed session under exemption 1985-1E, which is deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. 
and I can read this too if you want me to. Yes, please. Uh, which is setting, and specifically setting negotiation parameters for sale of district assets. The board will set negotiation parameters, including but not limited to sale price for the sale of unneeded district assets. So we can take a motion for can, that. Before we go a motion, we're going to have to have a time, right? Yep. So should yeah, we say 7.55? Yeah, just say closed session at right. maybe 8 o'clock. Uh, oh. I move to convene in closed session under exemptions 19.851E in Prescott High School room 117 at 7.55 p.m. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We will convene in six minutes.